All right, so now that we have our player who, again, if we animate him or her, he just, I was going to say he, it's easier. Uh, he just kind of sits there and breathes and huffs and puffs, right? That's what we want. Uh, but we also want to move him, obviously, and control him. Um, now to do that, the uh, the tricky thing here is that when you um, are applying behaviors to an animation that's constantly changing and things like that, uh, then it can get a little weird at times. So what we're actually going to do is create an invisible object and attach this player animation to that. And we're just going to move that invisible object and it'll look like he's actually moving. Okay. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually add um, another object. So double click anywhere, go to Sprite, and then insert. Okay. And again, we get this plus. It always like trips me out where I'm like, when anything open? Okay, so there's the plus. And we're going to go to uh, load an image from a file. And our, here we go, our file that we want to choose is the one called player box. And it should, when you open it, just look like a little purple box. Nice and easy. Okay, don't have to do any kind of changes to this other than uh, changing the origin to the bottom again. So if you don't change the origin to the bottom, then you would notice it right away because when you attach the animation of the player to this box, it would be floating in the air, kind of offset, it'd just be weird. So go to origin, let's do it the fast way, quick assign to bottom. There's only one frame, so we don't have to worry about adding it to all frames, and then close this. <coughs> and then, uh, oh, one thing I forgot too, we should rename our sprites here, because it's just silly having sprite 2 as the name. So you can also rename over here, so I'm going to call this player box, and our old sprite. I'm actually going to rename that to just player because that makes more sense. All right, so we got player, player box. Go back to um, reselect player box, and I'm going to actually zoom, control, and then scroll, zoom into these uh, two objects again. So here's our player box. And what we want to do is uh, overlay it with this guy much as possible over his sort of body area. And so if you notice right now, it's still snapping to grid, which is not that helpful actually. So I'm going to click on the layout and then I'm going to turn off snap to grid. And I'm going to click back on the player box. So I can do this, in, you know, as you can see in a much more customized way. And we want it to be about as big as he is. And there we go. And it also would be nice to actually see it. Um, or see the player that we're connecting to. So I'm going to change the opacity of our player box down to, let's say, 30%. Okay, so now you can kind of see where it is. Oh, and I can scale them off a little bit. So let's move it to like about there. Make that more narrow. Shorten that up. Okay. And um, since we are still on player box, we also want to take away this initially visible, because I want to make it invisible. So I'm going to uncheck this visibility box. And there we go. So the next thing uh, that we need to do actually for this player box is we're going to add some behaviors to it. So the way you do that is you go, once you're selected, make sure you're still selected on the player box. You're going to go over here to the properties column, click on behaviors right here in the link, and it'll bring up this little box that you're obviously going to add a new behavior to. So the behavior that we're going to add to this box, which will be the thing that we're actually moving, is called platform behavior. So it moves, as you see, it's in the movements section and platform, which, and then they give like nice little descriptions down here, jump and run along platforms, solid, jump through object. Great, so I'm gonna add that, and then now it has that behavior. What I'm also going to do is actually add the scroll to behavior because that will be helpful for our camera. Otherwise the guy is just going to jump and run off and our camera is not going to follow him. So click on scroll to 
as you can see, always center the view on this object or the midpoint of multiple objects. I'm going to add that. Okay, so now both of those there. And what you also notice is that the properties bar for our player box now contains a lot more stuff in it. it has behaviors, so platform movements and stuff that can do that. The scroll to section, you can either enable or disable or disable. <laughs> disable that. Uh, what we're going to do is actually change uh, some things in the behavior. So to make the motion of our guy just a little bit more reactive, um, we're going to change his jump strength to 1100, 1100, and we're going to change gravity to 2500, so 2500. All right, and that will make things feel just a little bit better. Hit enter, and there you go. Now you can close this box for the behaviors. And now we can actually control our player box, which is kind of silly because the player himself will not move. So now to connect the player to the player box, we're going to go to the event sheet. So click on the event sheet, and we're going to go up here to add event. And it will say what's the condition you want to do. So we want to say actually for this is a system wide. Uh, event that we want to be happening. So we're going to click on system, go to next, and we want to basically say every tick, because this means basically every time a frame is shown, uh, which usually is 60 frames per second. I'm not sure what it is actually for construct, but something like that probably. Um, every frame, make sure that we're going to connect our player to our player box object. So click on every tick, then go to next, and now we've created an event, but we have to create an action that's attached to that event. So we're going to go to add action, and so in this action, what we're going to be doing is taking the player, okay, so that's the object we're selecting, click next, and we're going to um, attach him to a different object. So uh, define that. Uh, uh, here we go. Set position to another object. Okay, in the size and position area. All right. So I have it highlighted. I'm gonna click next, and then it'll bring up a window saying choose which object to set the player's position to, and that will be our player box. Click OK. Don't worry about that image point thing. And then hit done. All right. There you go. So hopefully this will work. Before we play it, just to check, uh, we're going to save the project so we don't, uh, nothing gets lost. And now we can preview. Oops. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Dumb, dumb, dumb. All right. <laughs> we have to go back to our tiles. And what I forgot to do is make these into solid objects so that this thing can actually stand on these. So uh, select tile. And the behavior we want for these, and now all tiles are going to get it, is uh, the solid attribute so that you can actually stand on it. So we hit add. There you go. Okay. We're going to close that. And now, uh, save it, just make sure that it works. And hit preview. And now he's standing on there. And now if I hit my arrow keys, left, right, you see my guy is moving left to right. Press up. He moves up, press down, he doesn't go through the solid object. So now I can jump. Oh, ah, and I died. All right, but there we go.